Hello once again, wrestling fans, and welcome to Off the Top Rope Radio, heard exclusively right here worldwide on KQCK radio stations, USA and Costa Rica. We are glad to have you aboard. Today is Wednesday, February the 19th, 2014. Welcome once again. Off the Top Rope Radio is on the air. We appreciate you making us a part of your Wednesday evening. My name is Brian Shank. I'm the host as usual, and along with me... Across the board, pushing all the buttons, looking dapper in his Fender guitar hat is, of course, me, Mr. Joe. I love myself, Carrero. What's up, big guy? Hey, I'm doing all right. You? I'm looking good. You look like you're going to a little. Uh, Did you say you're looking good? I-, I am looking good, but you know, I- I'm used to saying that, so I'm just going to say you're looking good. Uh, I got the black on black. It looks like you're going to a Johnny Cash tribute concert. Always, or something. Yeah. always. You fell it's into like, it's a- like a big ring of fire. Yeah, out I was going to say you fell into a burning ring of fire. I did. Boy, some of the weather out here in Arizona it feels like a ring of fire. It feels so warm and it nice. will be soon. <sighs> It is nice now. I can't believe you're complaining it's too cool in the studio here. What, are you crazy? Well, I walk in here and it was like, I was looking for a side of beef, you know, hanging on the wall somewhere. 66 is not too cold. 66, my God, it was freezing in here. Are you you kidding me? Wet yourself down and come in. (laughs) Well, it kept the beer cold anyway, that's for sure. So, Anyway, like we said, we're glad to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. This is a great opportunity for all of us to talk some professional wrestling in the next 60 minutes or so. We're going to have some fantastic news coming up from my good buddy Doug McDonald from WrestlingRumors.net. We're going to discuss a lot of the latest news uh, and some rumors, of course. And we're also going to have Mr. Stan, the Lariat Hanson, the legend himself, will be joining us here at about the 5.30 mark, which is 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 out there near Huntington. And beach and, and in Papua New Guinea, what time is it there? Uh, I don't think they have clocks out there. I think they still rely. I mean, on you're sun. probably right. It is a sundial, sundial area, isn't it? So when it's like pointing towards the oak tree and the sand castle, it's about that time. Excellent. Yeah. So we're just like I said, glad to have you here, and we've got a lot of things to talk about. Some great news coming up. I want to first of all, before we go any further, I want to commend TNA Wrestling. TNA Wrestling the last couple weeks has been putting on some fantastic shows. Now, if you look at where they've been here lately overseas in England and everything, the crowds out there are tremendous. I mean, these are serious professional wrestling fans. I mean, anytime someone comes out, they're popping, they're cheering, they're shouting their name, Joe's going to kill you, and they're, they're shouting out the names. Uh, just tremendous, tremendous crowds out there. Not saying that the USA crowds are not great, because they are, but... There's just been a different feel here lately in TNA wrestling that I've been really enjoying. Last week we had the Wolves take on, well, they actually teamed up with Samoa Joe against the Bromans and Zima Ion. We saw MVP come out and just keep him going with his investor gimmick that he's doing with Dixie Carter. Uh, just great stuff. MVP is a fantastic performer inside the ring. With the microphone, wherever he is, he's really, really good. And just the talent itself, it's leaving a lot of holes open for, like, where are they going to go now with Abyss? Uh, where are they going to go with Bobby Roode? Um, will we see now a new champion here before the big pay-per-view? There's a lot of things going on, and it's fresh. It's new. Um, there was a lot of talk about TNA having some really bad financial problems, and they were looking to sell, and they are looking to get out, and everybody was saying, oh, they're going to crash. I'm going to tell you something. In the last couple of weeks, TNA Wrestling has been very enjoyable. I've been really liking the product. <clears throat> Not that I didn't like it before, but there's just something new about it. I don't know if it's... The people who are gone, like Hulk Hogan now, and Sting isn't on the TV shows anymore. Ric Flair is no longer there. They're focusing on some of the younger talent that just coming in. Like we said, the Wolves. uh, Mr. Rockstar Spud is getting a lot of exposure on TV. Magnus as your champion. Um, There's a lot of great talent in TNA right now, and I'm really enjoying what they're putting on TV. Uh, Good professional wrestling. I mean, the matches have been fantastic. We saw the Bully Ray match with Ken Anderson, the casket match. Very good. Um, some blood, some some her- crazy bumps outside the ring, some good chair shots. You know, kind of a little bit of hardcore, a little extremism there to it, but some very good professional wrestling nonetheless. The six man tag, like we talked about a moment ago, great. Good to see Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards, the Wolves out there. I'm really liking where this is going to go. TNA has always had a fantastic tag team division. And I think it's going to get even better now. They really focused on that. And some of the singles wrestlers who are up and coming and, and moving on and doing different things, it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. And I want to really applaud TNA for a fantastic show last Thursday from Manchester out there in England. My bloody fans out there who like to you know get tune on the TV. They tune on the telly. They don't call it TV. They call it the telly. You know what they call uh, cigarettes in um, England? They call them fags. Yeah, I forgot me fags, love. You know, I mean, you know, it's, it sounds weird. They, they don't say pants. It's trousers. You don't live in an apartment. You live in a flat. Uh, what are some other things there? Uh, oh, you don't take a vacation. You take a holiday. You know, so I just thought that was kind of cool. I think you're learning these <clears throat> things from that Geico commercial, aren't you? And and TNA wrestling. Right. Yes, I'm enjoying. Nice. And I, you know, like they would say, knowledge is power. So I'm pretty weak. 
You're, but, feeling, uh, you're feeling powerful today, though, right? <laughs> I'm feeling powerful today that I knew four different things in English, you know, old English, <laughs> than I do now. But uh, we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to ask my buddy Doug McDonald to go ahead and give us a call here from WrestlingRumors.net. We're going to discuss some of the things that are going on in TNA, the WWE, some other rumors we've heard about some of the pay-per-views coming up, the Elimination Chamber is this week as well. Uh, I do want to focus on where TNA is going to go because since I'm kind of on a high with them right now, I want to see what Doug's thoughts are about moving forward with that. So, Doug, go ahead and give us a call whenever you're ready. Whenever you hear this, we look forward to talking to you in a few minutes or so. And I just have to say thank you to the Fender rep that brought some hats in because I'm looking great you, in this hat you're, today. You're, you're looking for, is there a, there's an extra one hanging on the wall there. Is that one mine? Uh, no, it's not. I think it's, it's an extra for me because I, I didn't realize how good I looked in this damn hat. Wow. So you need two of the same hats? Is that out loud? No, I don't know. I can. I guess you may be like you need two razors, one for each face. But uh, No, oh, I'm thanks. joking. I'm joking. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw something in there, but... Uh, all right, let's go ahead and bring on my good buddy Dougie Fresh here from WrestlingRumors.net. We're going to discuss some of the news happening here. And don't forget, at the 5.30 mark, we're going to be uh, having a great interview with my buddy Stan Hansen, the Lariat. Stan the Lariat Hansen, wrestling legend extraordinaire. And I did something a little different this time with Stan Hansen. We're going to go ahead and we're going to give him 20 names of the people <clears throat> that he's wrestled with or against or in some way, shape, or form in the past 40 years or so he's been in the business. And, 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 a, su- and a super quick shout-out. Sorry to interrupt yeah. there. Super quick shout-out to some of uh, our regulars that are out there uh, throwing a chat up there, saying hello. I just want to say hey to Brandon Dack. And where's Brandon at? Minnesota? Is that yeah, right? Cold Minnesota. Out yeah. there, out he there goes freezing. By, he goes by Diggity Dack. So. And, and David Bender out there as yeah. well, uh, yeah, having a great time watching the show. So, hey. Hope you guys are doing great. Absolutely. Always always a pleasure hearing from you. If you guys ever want to send us some emails, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at kqckradio.com. Join our Facebook page, which is Off the Top Rope Radio. It's right there. Just go ahead and give it a like, <clears throat> and we'll try to update as much as we can, give away some stuff, some prizes, some trivia, whatever we can do. We're going to try to make it a little bit more interactive here, so look for that. But yeah, without further ado, let's bring on my good friend here, Mr. Dougie Fresh from WrestlingRumors.net. Doug, how you doing, man? What's going on, boys? Boy, I tell you what, an exciting week of professional wrestling. I just got done talking about the big TNA program they had last week. A really nice, fresh new direction. We've got the Elimination Chamber coming up from the WWE this week. Some more rumors going on about Sting, uh, CM Punk rumors. Uh, What's going to happen with Bobby Roode? I heard some other things about that. Let's kind of get into it here. Um, let's talk, first of all, I was mentioning it here in the beginning of the show, let's talk about the TNA program. I thought it was a very good show. To see Samoa Joe and the Wolves team up, Eddie, Rich, Eddie Edwards and uh, Davey Richards, against the Bromans and Zima Ion. I'm going to tell you something. Zima Ion is a bumping machine. I really enjoyed this match tremendously. I thought you had power. You had some good psychology at times. You had some really good wrestling moves. Uh, a great finish, in my opinion, at the end. <clears throat> and overall, a very decent six-man it got the heat on the heels pretty good. It got the baby faces over pretty well. The casket match with uh, uh, Ken Anderson and Bully Ray to end the show. Very nicely done. A very good TNA program. Yeah, no, I actually enjoyed it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a huge TNA fan because of how they actually ran storylines over the last few years. Mm-hmm. I just kind of got out of it. I used to love it in 2006. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it just kept... Get a little watered down and more watered down and more watered down. Um, I, I enjoyed the program Thursday night. I felt the cast match great. I've always been a uh, a uh, Dudley Boys fan. I've always been a uh, Anderson slash Kennedy fan. Mm-hmm. So I love the mic work both of those guys do. Um, and they back it up in the ring with, with great psychology inside the ring. So um, love Thursday's program. Would love to see it continue on this track um, like you said I mean the fans over in England eat it up so much more than the US than the US fans here for DNA big time they just absolutely <laughs> eat it up mm-hmm. UK love them some DNA uh, and, and I'm you know I don't really know why the you know it's always been that way uh, they're more wrestling driven than the story is you know, the, the WWE business. Plus, TNA goes up there and does more stuff with them than the WWE does. So, mm-hmm. well, I you, to the fans. Yeah, you but, know, we're getting some beeping here on the other line. I don't know if are I you, can... Are, and are you on a mobile, Doug? I am mobile, yeah. 
I, I thought so because we got a little, little tiny bit of cut out there. Just a little I, bit here. Yeah, there. no not, problem. Not, not too bad. And, but, that, uh, and the, by the way, that little, oop, that little beeping is because we've got a uh, minimum of seven rollover, of seven rollover lines trying to pound into us right now. And uh, yeah. I'm going to have to see what if we can get rid of that beep. What we'll, what we'll try to do here is after after after, after Doug is done with his uh, segment here, we'll try to take a few phone calls if we can. So please keep the phone number handy: four eight zero seven four five one zero three three. That's four eight zero seven four five one zero three three. And after Doug is done here from WrestlingRumors.net. We'll be happy to try to take a few calls before we get to the Stan Hansen interview. Trying to get more time structured around here, but uh, yeah, let's keep going here, Doug, because um, you know TNA now, they're, they're going to try to turn that corner a little bit. I love the interaction <clears throat> with uh, MVP. I think this is a very nice new piece of the puzzle that they added <clears throat> because if you look at the way he's interacting with Dixie, it just feels right. It sounds right. I, I also like that there's experience there with him to say, I can put up a pair of boots. I can get in there and do what I got to do. You want your two guys against my two guys for full control? Let's do it. Let's make it happen. It kind of wants to make you tune into next week. At least, I should say it does make you want to tune into next week and see what's going to happen because when you got something continuing on to the next the next week like that, it really is old school in my opinion. And I think TNA is kind of establishing that, and I hope they continue to go forward, Doug, and keep it going. I do too, and I really like that they are uh, going to take a sh- take a chance with Jeff Hardy's old gimmick, Willow the Whip. Yeah. yeah, because that is one hell of a crazy gimmick, and I'm excited to see how they use it. If they use it to a super creepy you know degree, or if it's just more childish, I don't know. Either way, it's nice to see something <laughs> fresh going to be used for, for Jeff Hardy. So I'm, excited. I'm more excited about that than I am in MVP right now. Was that a creepy promo but, for you or not? Because when I saw that promo with Willow and that whole promo they did in the woods with the mask and the voice and the laughter, did that creep you out? Because it sure did me. I'm not kidding you. I love it. I did too. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a horror movie guy. I love <laughs> that kind of genre. I love uh, creepy stuff like that. And, you know, and it's funny because mm-hmm. a lot of people got on, a lot of internet fans got online and started saying, well, TNA is doing this because Bray Wyatt is working. I mean, no. I need to talk to the marks out there right now and say Jeff Hardy was doing this a long time ago. That's correct. Like a long time ago. That's correct. Um, between between his run in, in, in the WWF, the first time he was uh, Willow the Wisp, 2003, um, he and Matt Hardy did that uh, with their uh, organization. And he was Willow the Wisp then, and he's gone back and forth doing independent dates now mm-hmm. as the Wisp. So it, it, it's not because, yes, TNA does people some of the WWE storylines. This is not part of it. This isn't, has nothing to do with it. It's pretty good doing for a while. Mm-hmm. So let's just check it out, see how it goes, quiet down, and enjoy the rest. Yeah, I I like it. I think that maybe, you know, even the Jeff Hardy thing, as big of the fans that he has, all the creatures of the night who love him and admire his work and his style and everything else, I think that maybe some of the diehard fans are going to welcome this. I know I will because I'm not tired of seeing Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is a fantastic performer. He's talented from head to toe, and he's just got an appeal about him that just makes you want to watch him inside the ring. Whenever Jeff Hardy's on the TV, I have to watch that match because I know he's going to give every single percentage that he can to a wrestling match. When him and CM Punk were doing the angles back in the WWE at the time, and then he went to TNA, I thought, wow, he's got so many opportunities here in TNA. Now a new opportunity. What's old is new again, so let's see what happens with that. But yeah, great show, TNA. I applaud what you did. Keep it up. Please keep giving us the great programs you've been doing here the last couple weeks because it really kept my interest. I like the wrestling inside the ring. I like the minimal promos they're doing. Nothing seems over the top so much to me, or even off the top for that matter, and and I'm liking that. Stick to what is easy, what's simple, because to me that's the best formula. Now let's move on a little bit here to some other wrestling news. What have you heard more about Sting? Because we have heard that... You know, he signed the Legends contract three weeks ago. Well, we're not totally sure about that now. And this is becoming like a weekly thing with us on the radio program. What more news do you have on the Stinger? Nothing much outside <laughs> of um, apparently the, he is the one that, that wants to do it. He's the one that's reaching out to the WWE. Uh, apparently they aren't pushing his debut um, because they just want to get through, you know, mania season kind of deal. Mm-hmm. And the key, you know, he, it's pretty obvious that they that he wants a, a match with Undertaker. The cool thing 
is that they were messing with internet fans the other day on WWE.com. It's actually still on their feature on WWE.com where they're showing obscure action figures. And yeah. of course they put Sting and an Undertaker action figure side by side. It's mm-hmm. pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I saw that. Just <laughs> messing with the mark. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, so that was a, a cool thing. He's the one that's she's the one shooting for it. I think that we see him. Uh, I think that we see him after WrestleMania. I think that um, going to lead to at least a Hall of Fame induction next year. Mm-hmm. Maybe a couple matches. But I know. I know for a fact that they're making. I have a buddy that works in Stanford, and he said that there is a memo going around that said Sting merchandise is being made. Nice. Nice. Well, that's that's a good sign. Whenever you got merchandise being pumped out of light, that's a good thing. And this is, of course, something we've been talking about, too. We saw the pictures on the Internet here, and I believe WrestlingRumors.net actually had posted these uh, about CM Punk at O'Hare Airport. Uh, been there many a times. Very freaking cold this time of the year. And he was out there wearing shorts and everything. Like, crazy, man. If you're a true Chicagoan, I guess, you know, 20-degree weather doesn't bother you. But he was sitting there picking up his real-life girlfriend, A.J. Lee, who is a current WWE superstar. Uh, diva, that is. Very nice-looking diva, too, by the way. And uh, What's that? He's a Davis champion, yeah. Yep, Divas champion. And he was there picking up at the airport. Now, there's been a lot of speculation that... She's going to be off of TV for a while, whatever else. They're looking into it by saying, well, now they're punishing her because she's with him and blah, blah, blah. I don't believe that is the case. I'm just thinking that maybe she's just taking a little time to be with him and you know spend some time with her real-life uh, fiancé or boyfriend or whatever. And I think that's great. You know, If you're if you're around each other so much and then you're not with the company, you're going to need some time to be together, especially the schedule that the people in the wrestling world do keep. Um, have you heard anything new about CM Punk? Again, another thing. He did get released. He didn't get released. He's going to. He's not. What more do we hear as of today, Wednesday the 19th of February? Yeah, that was the uh, the story of the weekend was, was that AJ Lee was in Chicago with Punk, which we obviously had uh, evidence of with pictures. Um, and then Monday, I do believe, PWInsider.com reported that he had, was actually given a release from the WWE on Valentine's Day. Hmm. And that rumor was immediately shot down by the WWE sending a statement to Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Mm-hmm. They they posted the statement saying that he has not been released. Uh, AJ Lee has not been released. And uh, Tuesday, yesterday, uh, PW Insider fixed their story. And it was just a rumor, but people mm-hmm. backstage were, were spreading it um, mm-hmm. because they were thinking about uh, maybe eight day, you know, and understand why AJ was gone. Apparently, she was just given a week off. Mm-hmm. Um, they were they were building towards a match with her and Naomi, uh, possibly for the chamber for for the title. Mm-hmm. And uh, Naomi had a, suffered a severe eye injury two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and will be out for four to six weeks. So yeah. that was scrap. So I don't, I don't, you know, they're not expecting her to be heavily featured on the program right now, so they gave her a week off. I mean, that's as, that's as simple as it's going to be right now. Yeah. Let's go ahead and discuss... Nobody knows go ahead. Punk is going, and we won't know until an official statement is made. Yeah, and that's the thing, is that right now everything is being very kind of hush-hush, and people are keeping silent, so it kind of adds more fuel to the fire, so to speak. we got a few more minutes here with you, Doug. We're talking to Doug McDonald exclusively from WrestlingRumors.net. When you want all your news and information and stuff, just go right to WrestlingRumors.net. You can like them on Facebook. You get all the updates in your news feed. they got a fantastic website. All the great stuff, WrestlingRumors.net. Go check them out. Good friends of mine. Okay, let's end on this one here. Elimination Chamber pay-per-view coming up this week. Um, there's a lot of things going on where there may be some surprises. I've heard things, but then we've heard, well, it's going to be John Cena, of course, winning once again. Um, Joe, did you want to say something? Hey, we've got people up here uh, sending me personal Facebook oh, yeah. messages letting me know, hey, we just want to thank WrestlingRumors.net for having uh, a really great informational site, and they want to just say thank you to you, Douglas, or is it Dougie Fresh? Dougie Fresh. Um, for having this uh, newsletter that they're signing up for and really enjoying. So uh, thank you uh, so much for taking care thank of our you. listeners. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you for checking us out and, and coming to us every day for your news. It's awesome. Absolutely. We're, that, we're, we're, we're in the business to serve, not be served. There so you go. You. <laughs> hey, right on. And that, and that goes for summons, too. So, uh, anyway, uh, so let's talk about the Elimination Chamber here in the last few minutes that we have, Doug, because I want to talk about the pay-per-view. It should be a good one. A lot of speculation about 
you know, the things that are going to happen, probably that John Cena will become victorious in this. But I'll tell you, any indication on that wrestling match that him and Cesaro had on Monday, I could really see a program for these guys in the future. What are your thoughts for the Elimination Chamber this coming Sunday, and who do you think is going to walk out victorious? Uh, well, let's see. I have uh, wrestling. If you, if you follow WrestlingRumors.net, like these people were saying that they do, you will see all of our staff's predictions uh, on Saturday morning. I'll go ahead and tell you some of mine. I think Randy Orton's walking out the champion still. I don't see um, the logic in having him lose every match but a Christian match as a single champion. It just made him look really weak, and I don't see a weak champion um, that, that goes in looking that bad, uh, not having some some kind of swerve to make him walk out as champion to go against Batista mm-hmm. at WrestleMania. Um, and it may not be just Batista, it may be Daniel Bryan from in the mix as well, but I just see... I just see Randy Orton leaving the chamber at the champ and build up to possibly a double turn for WrestleMania, having Batista go heel and walk out as champion at WrestleMania, and Randy Orton uh, becoming a face again, mm. turning on authority. Uh, yeah. As far as the John Cena Cesaro thing goes, I think that we can actually see a John Cena Cesaro program board out of this. John Cena's very high on Cesaro. They're working out together, doing muscle fitness shoots together. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and he said like to work out with the guys to see what their you know, mentalities are and, and before they get big man that pushes. We've talked about the fact that Cesaro is about to get a main push. I mean, they just shortened his name for this. They're teasing at the swagger, uh, Real Americans, break up. So I really think that we might get a, a Cena Cesaro program in the near future. It's rumored to be Cena versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Um, but now that they've kind of quieted down on that and, and they haven't really teased that at all in the last couple of weeks because mm-hmm. of the whole shield wide family dynamic. Right. I think could see Cesaro Cena at WrestleMania. I would love to see that because if it's any indication what they did on Monday night, uh, I think they can go further with this and really make a great program out of it. And, it. and you know, I think that if you get a great guy in there like Cesaro who can really wrestle, it really brings the best out of someone like John Cena, who <clears throat> I'm not saying is not a good wrestler, but, you know, he even says himself he's kind of limited to what he does in there. He's not going to deny that. He's even said it, you know, out on, on national outlets and stuff like that. But, I mean, when you see John Cena really work and bust his ass in there with somebody who can really give him a great match, it was very refreshing to see and it was a great program so let's see what happens this sunday and we'll talk more about uh the wwe network next week because it'll be active and you know signed up for and things like that on monday the 24th we'll be back here on the 26th of course and we'll talk a little bit more about what's happening with that and uh, again if you want to check out all the greatest news and stories and rumors out there wrestlingrumors.net You'll see all the great news. Sign up for it on Facebook. Go to it every day. Enjoy it because it's a great professional wrestling website. So, Doug, thanks so much, man. Thank you, boys. Always enjoy it. We'll catch you on the next one. Hey, always, a, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you, Dougie. Sounds good. Yes, sir. All right. Dougie Fresh, always informative and telling us what's going on out there. We always appreciate his input. And you know what, Brian? We <laughs> yeah. do not have time to take calls because we're three minutes over uh, getting uh, Stan the Lariat on the line. So let's go yeah. ahead and do that. That's and uh, you guys can always shoot Brian an email at brian at yeah. kqckradio.com. That's Brian with an I, not a Y. That's right. B-R-I-A-N. At kqckradio.com. And, you know, if we have a few minutes at the end of the show before we uh, have to go, if we end with Stan a little bit early, I'd be happy to take some phone calls so we can get some people in there like that. And, uh, Joe. Joe, will you do me a quick favor, sir? Would you mind grabbing me that pad of paper that's over there in the chair? I, I need that for my notes here, and uh, i got to make sure I'm very – it's a white piece of uh, notebook paper right there. Thanks, buddy. And uh, that's JoJo right there, the, the, uh, the second in line to the throne. <laughs> First in line goes to the wife, of course, uh, which is Joe's wife. But uh, now we're just having some fun here. JoJo's a great guy. He does a good job here, and he's always uh, – in tune with things. We're going to have talking to Stan, the Larry at Hanson here in just a moment or two, and I look forward to discussing a lot of things with him. Like we said before, we're going to bring him on the air, and we're going to do something a little bit different <clears throat> that we've done before in the past with some of our wrestling uh, interviews in the past. We're going to do something a little bit differently. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to get him on the air, and we're going to talk a little bit something about his past, and I'll bring him on right now, and we're going to discuss all these things with my good buddy, the professional wrestling legend. He is, of course, Mr. Stan, the Larry at Hanson. Mr. Hanson, how you doing today, sir? Oh, look at that. There's a little applause for him. Yes, indeed. All right. How you doing, Stan? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks. 
Thanks for calling. Oh, not a problem. Thanks for joining us on the air here. We are talking to Stan the Lariat Hansen, a six-time world champion, uh, one time in the AWA, the CWA International Heavyweight Champion, and a four-time All Japan Pro Wrestling Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. Some of the best matches you've ever seen. Now, Stan, like we had you on the last time, last year, I told you at the end of the interview, I says, you know what, next time I have you on, we're not going to talk about your career so much because we know how storied it is and how great it was. But we're going to talk a little bit about some of the people you've been around and worked with and worked against in the business. And you said, hey, bring them on. I'd love to do that. So I've got 20 names. We're playing 20 questions with you today with 20 names in the professional wrestling world. So uh, I'll bring up a few little things, little stories, some background, and I'll throw those names out to you. And then you just kind of go from there. Give me a minute or two on each one, and let's have some fun with this. You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Now, I remember Steve Kern, who uh, wrestled as the Fabulous Ones uh, with Stan Lane, and he also wrestled as Skinner in the WWF back in the day. And he told me that he used to uh, chew licorice, black licorice, to make it look like it was tobacco. So when he would you know, come to the ring, he would spit it, and it kind of fit his character as this you know, backwoods kind of guy. Now, your tobacco was real chaw. This wasn't this fake black licorice stuff, right? This was real tobacco you'd spit. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was. It was real tobacco. I used to chew tobacco, and uh, yep, uh, it was real tobacco. But uh, Steve was probably smart using licorice. <laughs> it, it sure wasn't. Uh, it sure wasn't. You know, as toxic as uh, tobacco. And I used to suck that stuff down my throat. Ugh. I'd call for ten minutes after every match. It was really a bad deal, but. I, I liked it because I looked nasty. Yeah, <laughs> you were nasty. You were a nasty individual inside that wrestling <laughs> ring, Stan. Let me tell you. Okay, let's, since we're on that subject, let's talk about Steve, uh, Steve Kern because Steve Kern. I know you know him. You've been around him. What's your thoughts on Steve? This is this is name number one. Well, Steve Kern, man. We go all the way back to the first year uh, I started. I think Steve started about uh, two or three months before me. He was down in Florida. Mm-hmm. He gets fed, uh started by Mike and Eddie Graham. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went to school with Mike, I think. Good friends with him. Nice. Anyway, he was in the business. I came down after four months of breaking in in Amarillo. They sent me down to Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, right off the bat, Steve and I kind of got together. We were uh, both young guys, and uh, we were only uh, working. Steve worked a little bit more than me because he had a little connection. But, uh, you know, he probably uh, he deserved that. But uh, anyway... Uh, I was only working about four days a week or something, and uh, we became pretty tight there for a while. Cool, cool. Yeah, Steve's a great guy. We had him on the show before, and uh, very, very nice individual. And boy, what a great worker he was. Um, okay, that's that's name number one. We've got twenty, so let's go on to the next one. Uh, in 1975, when you first kind of got into the wrestling business, um, your first partner at that time was somebody who is a true, true legend in this business and someone that uh, a lot of people know and admire. He's no longer with us, but what a great guy. Number two name on the list here is Bruiser Brody. How about Bruiser? Well, of course, you know, uh, you know, uh, Frank was uh, – uh, we were in college together for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was uh, three years younger than him. But uh, he was at West Texas State where uh, I went to college. Mm-hmm. and played football, and he played football. So I got to know Frank there, but not really tremendously well. But I, I, I did know who he was, and then later on, uh, we hooked up with him in the Dallas Territory. He was he had been out of college for a while, and uh, I'd gotten in, and this is 73. Mm-hmm. 73. And uh, Frank was uh, trying to get uh, – he was trying to break in there for uh, – uh, for Fritz, and mm-hmm. Fritz was breaking him in. And uh, I used to, the first thing I said when Bronco Lubitsch talked to me about brother, uh, he said, oh, Frank Goodish is a really nice guy. You mean that crazy, wild son of a bitch? <laughs> you know, from West Texas? No, no, no. You got the wrong guy. This guy's a nice, quiet guy. Really? Yeah, is that right? And I went over there, and I, I said, God, what, what's going on? We got a loan. And I said, what are you doing? And he says, he says, hey, I'm trying to get in the business. Don't pay, say anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That sure sounds like him, too, because I'll tell you something. I saw an interview with Bruiser Brody, and it was a sit-down interview, like a very professional type of you know, interview before the, all the shoot interviews came out. <clears throat> and, boy, I'll tell you what, you listen to this guy talk. Educated, sincere, smart, witty. 
you would never think that that was Bruiser Brody in front of you talking when you heard him talk just as Frank Goodish. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's too. Frank was a smart guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, period. He was a smart guy. And mm-hmm. uh, he actually was a, uh, uh, a sports reporter for the Dallas Morning News, which is a wow. huge newspaper here in Texas. And, and uh, for a while, he, fo- he followed high school and wrote a little article and everything there. Wow. And uh, played for the San Antonio uh, uh, Toros, I think, uh, was the, uh, the Continental or the Texas League uh, semi-pro team. Anyway, uh, yeah, Frank was a smart guy, you know. Wow. I did not know that. I didn't know he wrote for a newspaper. I thought <clears throat> I thought he was always just a big athlete who uh... – you know, made his mark in the professional wrestling world, but that's that's tremendous. I I, I miss the man very much. He was a great talent. Let's move on here because we got a lot of names here, so I'll make sure we get them all in before the end of the show. In the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, you had some tremendous matches with Bruno San Martino. Matter of fact, there was a moment where I believe Bruno legitimately broke his neck, and what I read, and I definitely want to get your side and tell me what is true and what's not, is I read that. Suppose it was from a lariat that you gave him, but then it was something else where it was a body slam where he landed incorrectly or whatnot. Um, put him on the shelf for a while, then he came back and you had some more matches. Um, tell us a bit about what that situation was, and then, of course, something about Bruno, please. Well, Bruno was a fast guy. You know, a guy named Mike Fedusis, who lived in Steubenville, Ohio, and knew Bruno real well. Uh, Steubenville is close to Pittsburgh, and uh, anyway, they go way back. Uh, Mike Fedusis lived in Dallas, and he saw me wrestling in Dallas. And he said, hey, man, you ought to go up to New York. And I said, well, God, everybody dreams about going to New York. But anyway, so he went up there and talked to Bruno. Mm -hmm. And then I guess Bruno talked to Vince, and and Vince called uh, Red Bestine, and uh, that's basically how I got there. And uh, and all off of a guy named Mike Fedusis, who was Bruno's friend. But, but Bruno was just a class guy, you know. I mean, he, I mean, you know, I mean, they talked about a lot of guys being over now in this new age, but nobody was over like Bruno was oh. in that in that area in the Northeast and the, the old WWF. Yeah, uh, he, he he's a legit uh, superstar. I mean, long before there was any superstars, and uh, he, uh, he he he's just a class guy because I did him. Right. I did break, uh, you know, I did break his neck, mm-hmm. broke three of his vertebrae, Ouch. and it was because, you know, that I, I slammed him, you know, slammed him on the back of his head, mm-hmm. basically, and, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he didn't hold it against uh, against me, thank God, and uh, <laughs> he said he, he got two broken bones in, in his wrestling career. Bobby Duncan broke his arm, and I broke his neck, <laughs> and we both went to West Texas. Oh, that tells you one thing, guys. Don't mess with people from West Texas. I'll tell you right now, that's a bad thing to do. <laughs> let's uh, let's skip ahead a little bit here. And, of course, you're just, if you're just tuning in, we are speaking to the legend himself, Mr. Stan the Lariat Hansen, six-time world heavyweight champion. Um, 1985, the AWA, uh, you beat Rick Martell for the heavyweight championship. And I want to kind of do this whole thing here. I'm going to give you, like, four names because it kind of all ties in. So the AWA, 1985, you beat Rick Martell for the heavyweight championship. You were supposed to face Nick Bockwinkel for a match, and it was told to you by Vern Gagne, from what I understand, and I think you and I talked about this before, that you were supposed to drop the belt to Nick Bockwinkel. But then after you spoke with, uh, um, uh, I believe it was Giant Baba back uh, in Japan, they already had stuff lined up for you as the champion to wrestle over there after this match was over. <clears throat> and then, you know, we talked about this on the last show, that, you know, you basically took the belt with you, ran over it a little bit a few times with a with a truck and sent it back to them, and uh, that's been well documented. But you also, at that time, feuded with Greg Gagne, and you tied him up and made him squeal like a little pig. So we got four names there. Rick Martell, which is number four. Number five is Nick Bockwinkle. Number six is Greg Gagne. And number seven is Vern Gagne, the man himself. So let's rewind. Give us some thoughts on Mr. Rick Martell. Well, you know, Rick Martell, you know, I mean, you've announced me as announced me as a six-time world heavyweight champion. You know, I wasn't, uh, you know, I was the AWA world heavyweight champion. Right. Uh, all the other uh, belts that I had were, you know, were the Pacific and or, you know, yeah. Universal or wherever in, in, in Japan. But those weren't 
you know, I don't consider those the world heavyweight belt. Yeah, I guess I anyway. should have said I should have said six time champion is what I guess I should have said. Yeah, so thank okay. you for. I'm not going to argue with Stan Hansen. I'll take that. I don't want to be like <laughs> Harley. I was seven, seven times, you know, whatever. <laughs> I hear you. But anyway, uh, you know, Rick Martel. Uh, actually, I met him in Dallas, and we used to have to. We went out and we did uh, 45 minute uh, draw matches Whew. in the last night, uh, the last match, because Fritz always put himself, he was in the main event, he put himself on early, but then he had put us two young guys out there and we'd go 45 minutes. Fritz hmm. would go about seven, eight minutes you know, <laughs> and get all the money. But anyway, Martell and I, so that's where I got to know Rick Martell. He was 19 years old. Wow. And, uh, he one time beat me in about eight seconds, wow. and uh, my my mother, God bless her soul, she always every time his name was mentioned, she would look me right in the eye and say, "Didn't he beat you in eight eight seconds?" <laughs> <laughs> every time, you know. She, so uh, Rick Martell has a special place in, in my mom's mind, and also in mine. He's a class guy, great yeah. guy, just a great athlete, good looking guy, just a great baby face. Yeah, and. Uh, Anyway, and then going on to uh, Nick Nick Bockwinkel, yes. you know, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on Nick. Mm -hmm. I always liked Nick. You know, I, I, I think Nick was a class guy, too. I mean, he really was. And, and uh, he, he mentored me when I was going through some personal problems over in Japan one time, and I never will forget that. On the business side, you know, it just it just happened to work out that that was a, that was a bad deal. And... Uh, he even tells me to this day that he told Vern, you know, he says, you know, you don't need to spring this on Stan Hansen, you know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, so and, and that all and what he was talking about was, you know, that they wanted me to drop the belt, and I hadn't made any money with it. I didn't ever think that I was going to get the belt. I really? never thought that I would get the AWA belt. But if they gave it to me, and they did, then I wanted to make some money. I wanted to make some money. Sure. And they just, you know, they they just kind of used me as a guy to take it from, uh, you know, one baby face mm -hmm. and put it on another baby face. And I just, I just, uh, I didn't buy into that. I didn't agree to that anyway. Yeah. So that's where the conflict came with uh, Nick and I. We really didn't have a conflict. It, it just happened to be him that I didn't have the match with. I decided to go to Japan. And mm -hmm. As far as going to Japan, I didn't call Baba up and, and ask him what to do or anything. I just left. I knew, I knew that this wasn't right for me, mm. you know, so I, that's why I did it. And I guess maybe uh, Japan business, too. But it was more about me, you know. Uh, Baba had his own business. You know, I was just part of it. Right. So, right. you know, in, 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 that, in that sense. So, uh, and then, of course, it burned. Vern helped, you know, he, you know, we had that falling out, and that, I mean, it's face to face, and, but nothing ever happened, and, you know, anyway, I left, and about 10 years later, they had a caller from the alley uh, thing where I was there, and they seated Vern and I together, Dick oh. Byers, the uh, destroyer. <laughs> what a big joke that was, huh? <laughs> right across the table from Vern and me, we were sitting there. <laughs> And we looked at each other and just kind of smirked and, you know, laughed. And, you know, it was over. Oh, yeah. that's great. That's, I, yeah, yeah I, it is good because, uh, you know, because he did give me a chance. And yeah. you know what? He gave me his word right. about a few other deals that he kept them. And, uh, you know, I want to say that about Vern Gagne. Nice. He kept his word to me. Nice. It just, this, how, how it came about just was not done professionally like i thought yeah and you know and that happens in this in this business obviously yeah, it you know. does. Yeah, it, it it sure does. now let's talk about the other name because i, I gave you Vern. uh this will be number seven mr greg Ganya, who's a good friend of mine i love i love greg he's a good good guy I, he's funnier in hell too what about greg well i'm glad you love greg uh oh <laughs> okay no, no I, let, let's hear it let's hear it. you know i like greg i think greg greg was is the typical second generation wrestler that had to bear a lot of brunt of yeah. being the boss's uh, son. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it, 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 you know, so, you know, he was teamed up with Jim Brunzel, and they were a great team, and, and, and uh, they were a good team. And, uh, you know, Brunzel was a great talent, and, and Greg, Greg could do that. You know, he, he was a good talent, too. Mm -hmm. 
I had a few problems with Greg because, you know, I was the big nasty heel. I was trying to promote myself because I felt like they weren't promoting me. And, and a couple of times I had, uh, we had a little conflict, you know, in, 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 you know, at the, in the ma- at the matches, he was a TV commentator, and mm-hmm. one time, you know, I mean, he got upset because I hit him with the chair, and you know, I thought he'd move out of the way. <laughs> Not that he didn't move, so I hit him. You know, I mean, hey, what am I supposed to do? That's anyway, you, that's you get for thinking, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so he he got a little pissed off at that, but you know what? I, I don't have nothing negative to say about Greg. He's, yeah. He, he was a good talent, man. Yeah. Like I said, you know, second-generation guy. Mm. You know, you can never please everybody. You can never prove yourself to everybody because you're – you're the promoter's son, and that's a tough job. I oh, bet. boy, I'll tell you the yeah. I mean, you look at the Von Erichs, you know what kind of pressure they had and everything with Fritz and whatnot. So, but that's that's that, that's obviously a different story. But let's move on here because we got numbers eight. That ni- definitely is a different story. Oh yeah, big time. That would be like a whole nother <laughs> show. <laughs> but let's go on to this eight, nine, and ten here names we got coming up uh, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. After that, you went back and you feuded with Inoki, uh, Antonio Inoki, the you know great, great professional wrestler. You also teamed with Hulk Hogan and Dick. Murdoch around that time, so we got Inoki, Hogan, and Dick Murdoch. How about those three right well, I there? Never, I never, I, I didn't team with Inoki. No, 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 no. I, no, you teamed with Hogan and Murdoch, though. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you feuded, you so, feuded so with you're Inoki. you talking about yeah. Hogan and Murdoch? Yeah. You know, uh, Hogan, Hogan was, you know, they, they were starting to push him, and they put us together, and, and we had some great times together, and, uh, you know, Hogan was fairly, you know, he was he was just getting, he had been in the business a little while. I mean, he had a hard time getting in the business. Mm-hmm. He had to go through a bunch of stuff. They really put him through a lot of things. I, I, I take a, you know, I give his, uh, you know, a hat, hat to him, you know, because, uh, you know, they, he had to sleep in his uh, car on the van. Uh, you know, they broke it, broke it, you know, Matsuda broke, broke his bone and some bone, I don't know, leg, hand or something to chase him off. But he came back. Anyway, by the time I met him, he was in, well, I met him in Atlanta, but then I, 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 over in Japan, we mm-hmm. got to be teamed up and everything, and then he, he had kind of a, you know, a good chance. They were starting to push him. They liked him a lot, mm-hmm. and, uh, but anyway, they, he ended up going back to the AWA, and right. God, you know, that, <clears throat> the rest is history, you know. I mean, yeah. he, he became a, a great star here in the States, and I, I'm happy for that. Dick Murdoch, he was one of the Amarillo boys, you know. I mean, he was one of the guys that broke me in. And he, he, to me, he was the best big guy. You know, I'm talking 300-pound, 300-pound mm-hmm. talent, you know, there was in the business. He was the best. He was I, great. I, I really say that with honesty. Murdoch could do everything. He could be a heel. He could be a baby face. Yep. He, he was awesome. He, he was one of the best workers there was. And, you know, I mean, he... Uh, you know, he, he he was just good, and I, I I learned a lot from watching Dickie. You know, Dirty yeah. Dick, Dirty Dick Murdoch, great guy. Yeah, That's right. He was, you know, and the thing that you the made. You made a good point about him being a great heel and a great baby face. You know, and a lot of times. That's not easy to do, but you're right. When he was when he was a face, you know, with Dusty Rhodes back in the day in the NWA, then he turned heel again and joined Ivan Koloff, and back in the WWF with uh, Adrian Adonis, the late great Adrian Adonis. I mean, he was very versatile and just a, a great talent. I love Dick Murdoch. Yeah, yeah, he was. I yeah. mean, and, and you know, like I said, he he, he was just great. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, just and, and a good guy. You know, Dickie was. Uh, you know, Dickie was Dickie. I mean, yeah. uh, everybody knew where Dickie stood. Yep. There was no, you know, I mean, you either liked him or you hated him. You right. Know, there was, and, and that was the way he was with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, I, I, I had a lot of respect for Dickie, you know. And we kind of talked about Inoki a minute, a minute ago there. We can move on here because we want to get try to get all these names in here. Um, let's move on to number, let's see, we're going over to number 11 here. How about uh, Terry Bam Bam Gordy? I know you had some stuff with him, Ted DiBiase, Dan Spivey. So I'll give you three of those right there, Terry Gordy. Ted DiBiase, Dan Spivey. Uh, t- 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 uh, Terry Gordy. I mean, he he, he just uh, he was the guy that was uh, they were grooming to take you know to actually take my spot you know mm-hmm. and he and he and he well deserved it. He was 
He was one of the, you know, he was another. He was another Dick Murdoch. Yes. He was another 300-pound guy that could, could do it all. Yes. And, uh, yes. Uh, you know, just a great, great talent. Just mm-hmm. just a great talent and everything. He, you know, he had a few issues, you know, that he, he never, ever seemed to tame, you know. But, but that said, you know, in, in the ring, he was a great guy and just a, just a nice guy, you know, and, uh, you know, he was he was teamed up with uh, you know Michael Hayes and, and Buddy Roberts, and they were a great team around Texas. Freebirds. But uh, Terry Gordy, I always thought was the, you know he was the real the, the real talent. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, not, I'm not knocking the other guys. It's just uh, Terry Gordy. I think they have to say Gordy was a great one of the greater workers. And uh, it's a sad deal how he, yeah. You know, he, he ended up and everything. Too young. He, DiBiase, he was a great partner, good partner. You know, he was, uh, you know, he was more of a baby face. And I, they tried to make him a heel. They put him with me. You know, we were a pretty good wrestling team and everything. Teddy was a good, you know, scientific, you know, quote, quote. You know, he, he was a good scientific type wrestler. Could do a lot of stuff in the ring. He was a second generation guy, too. You know, and and uh, he had a lot of you know a lot of things to you know to prove. But you know, over there, you know, we we did all right, and then he made that deal with Vince and come the million dollar man, and the rest <laughs> is history. You know, everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. Yeah, that's right. yeah, <laughs> what, a, what a great gimmick, huh? That's that's good. Yeah, I, I'm happy for him, and and we uh you know, Teddy and I were close. Now we're close, close, and still are close. We don't see each other a whole lot anymore, but we're connected way back there together. And, and yeah. every time we, we see each other, we we have a lot of common things, our faith, you know, a lot of different things, you know. So we, you know, we, uh, uh, I'm happy for him that he, he's done well. He's a good guy. Who was the third one? Uh, Danny Spivey, Dan Spivey. Oh, uh, Spivey. He was one of, actually, he's, he's one of my favorite partners. Second Is that right? Brody. Really? Second. Second to Brody. Spivey. No, wait, 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 wait. We gotta stop here a second. Hold on a minute. I want to go on record that Stan Larry Hansen said your second favorite partner besides Bruiser Brody was Dan Spivey. Really? Yeah, my favorite. I mean, you know, I'm talking about the guy. You know, I'm talking about I like Danny Spivey. Okay. Period. Okay. And I, yeah, yeah, and he was a good talent. He was big, raw, strong. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was a great partner for me. You know, I nice. mean. You know, all those other guys that I had great, uh, you know, teams with, they were all great, great talent. And, and, and if you put talent side by side, maybe. I'm just saying that I got along and I like Danny Spivey, you know, as well as almost anybody, you know. And oh, I, yeah, yeah. And I, that's a compliment to Danny. I, I, I just liked him, you know. And yeah. he, was, he was a good guy and, and he was a... He was a big guy, and he was a stand-up guy, and, you know, I liked him. You know, he got kind of thrown into a weird situation in the WWF around 86 when Barry Windham went back to the NWA with Jim Crockett, and uh, you had Mike Rotundo, who was a tag team champion with Barry Windham at the time, and they threw in Dan Spivey because he resembled Barry Windham with the long blonde hair and the big six foot eight frame. So he kind of got thrown into a weird situation there, but, boy, he really developed after that and became a pretty decent wrestler on his own. Uh, he wrestled for a while as Waylon Mercy back in the WWF around 94, 95, but, and the skyscrapers with Sid Vicious at the one time. and um, Great talent. Good guy, too, like you said. Very cool guy. Yeah, you know, well, you know, like I said, I leave, all those things he wrestled under, I'm not familiar with. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, let's move, on to no, let's move on to number 14 here because we've got about another six more here. We've got about... Eight minutes in the show, so I think we can do this. Uh oh, here we go. How about Vader? I know that you could talk probably forever about Vader and the, on the whole incident back in '92, but let's let's bring up Vader. What do you think? Well, I mean, nobody ever beat each other to a pulp Ugh. like we did, you know. Wow. And uh, you know, I mean, Vader, Vader's Vader. I mean, all you have to do is ask any of the wrestlers. Vader's Vader. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the way he is. That's the way he is. That's the way he's going to be. I like it. And whatever. And uh, you know, we had a great match. It stands out. I, uh, I was close with him at one time. He lived in Colorado. His son and my son were about the same age. We, you know, they got together a few times, and but uh, you know, he, he's moved on. I, I hadn't kept up with him and everything, but you know, that match stands out as one of the great matches that everybody talks about. Huge. You know, I mean, we were both. Uh, the next day was the ju- uh, 
uh, oh, the boxing uh, where uh, the guy loses the belt. Oh, but Mike Tyson? Has, yeah, Tyson loses to Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas. He, and and Leon, Leon said, oh, I got tickets to the, you want to go and stay and go, go to that thing? So listen, I've already been in the fight tougher than anything you could, <laughs> I could see tomorrow. I went home, and when I got off and went through customs, and they said, guys, you come from Japan? Yeah, he said, oh, Tyson got beat. And I went, God, I just cracked up. I couldn't believe it. That's funny. Yeah, that was February 10th, 1992. The Tokyo yeah. Dome against uh, it's to- the Tokyo Dome against Vader was kind of funny because Vader represented the uh, N and uh, I'm gonna say NJPW all New- Japan yeah all Japan and uh, uh, no I, you, I, you were I represented all Japan yeah you represented New, New Japan. Japan yeah great yeah. match God it was awesome and then not too far after uh, before that uh, the Wrestling Summit the Super Show between the WWF and the AG uh, AJPW. Uh, just after WrestleMania six, uh, the Hulk Hogan Wrestling Summit, that was cool. But I want to go back a little bit before that. And you had a good feud in Japan with Mr. Andre the Giant, number 15 oh, on our list. Yeah, I can't say enough about Andre. I probably owe my my career in Japan was really probably really made by Andre the Giant. Really? Because he was looking for an opponent. He needed somebody. He couldn't go in there and beat up a, you know, a 200 and... 30 pound Japanese every time. Right. But I, you know, I fought him because I was trying to build myself up and try to, and they were promoting me. And I fought Andre, and he was smart enough to, you know, to, to put me over a little bit. And the people got with it. And uh, really, I mean, I think uh, I think that's probably the, the thing that really got me over in Japan more than anything was nice. uh, Andre the Giant. Nice. I owe him for that. Very nice. God rest his soul. All right, number 16 yep. on our list here. we got five more to go here, 16 through 20. Number 16, 1990, you feuded with Mr. Lex Luger in the WCW. Uh, that was when uh, you traded back the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. How about some thoughts on Lex? You know, uh, I'd heard nothing but negative about Lex, ego, this, that, and the other, and everything. But, uh, you know, the guy, the guy was uh, nothing but all ears with me, and uh, he... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I had no problems whatsoever. He seemed like a nice guy, you know, uh, not one thing, you know, that uh, I can't say a negative thing about him. He he was there in the ring, and, uh, you know, he was over, and, uh, you know, I was coming in and out, and I was probably on my way out just about that time. But anyway, he, uh, you know, I guess I spit the back on his chest or something <laughs> when during the, at the end of one of the matches that all the boys thought was really great, but it was just part of my character. It wasn't anything personal against yeah. Lex. Yeah, it was a big, 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 big block of chaw on his chest. I remember that. We still laugh about that sometimes <laughs> we watch that match. Lex is a good guy. He Lex has really turned things around for him. He's had a rough go at it as of the last few yeah, years. Yeah, he but, has. Yeah. And I, you know, God I've look. talked to him since then, saw him in a few of these old, old, old play, uh, you know, old guys reunion things, and, uh, you know, he seems like he's doing uh, all right now. He's doing pretty good. Okay, number 17 on our list here, Ole Anderson. Uh, yeah, well, Ole was the booker mm-hmm. in Georgia, and he was, you know, he, he brought me in, you know, and uh, against a lot of uh, negative stuff from some other people, I guess, but uh, he brought me in, and I ended up having a great run there. I've worked against him for a long time and mm-hmm. i worked him as his partner and then everything you know only it was the, one of the few bookers that he told me this is what i'm going to do with you if you can do this then i'm going to do this and that was it cool. and that was and that's exactly what happened you know and uh you know he he told me exactly where i stood and nice. i like that red bestine did that to me in dallas too and I, I, he's another one but only and, you know, I got to be friends with Ole. I'm still uh, friends with Ole. Uh, a lot of people don't like Ole. I've seen him treat guys good, and I've seen him treat guys bad. But, you know, he he treated me good, and I'll always remember that. Good for you. That's a nice story. In case you're just tuning in, we're talking to Stan and Larry Hansen here, right here on Off the Top Rope Radio with Brian Shank and Joe C. on KQCK Radio Stations, USA, Costa Rica. And uh, number 18, Dory Funk. How about the, how about the Funker? You mean Dory Funk? Yeah, Dory Funk, Funk. Uh, Dory Funk Jr., I'm sorry. Okay, Dory Funk Jr., you know, he was the champion when I got broke in. Mm-hmm. So he was gone. He was basically gone. And he was out defending the, the World Heavyweight Championship belt. Right. And when he finally came back, 
I was basically almost on the way out of that uh, Amarillo territory going out, you know, going on with my career. I mean, or trying to, you know, book me out to Louisiana or Florida or wherever. And uh, so I didn't, I, I didn't touch Dory until I went back to Japan. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I, you know, met him in Japan, him and Terry, of course, were very, extremely uh, popular, one of the great tag teams, babyface teams in, in Japan ever, you know. And people loved them over there, you know, especially mm-hmm. Terry, but I can get into that later. But, but Dory was a great tactician, and, and you know, he, he could wrestle with anybody, you know. He, oh, yeah. He, that's what made him the great champion that he was, and and he's, I mean, he he is one that I, I think everybody says he's the best best NWA champion ever. Yeah, I'd give it that. I, I would definitely put Dory Fun Jr. up in the top three for sure. Two more names here, Mr. Stan Larry and Hanson. How about someone you held the NWA Georgia Heavyweight Championship with two times, Mr. Wildfire Tommy Rich? Oh, Tommy, man, what a great guy! You know, when I went to Atlanta, I. I saw him working, and after I was there for about a couple of months, you know, I, I told Ole, I said, you know, give me that Tommy Ridge, man. <laughs> Let me have that little white meat baby face. <laughs> and, you know, he, and, I mean, he was he was like 19 or 20. And yeah. He was, you know, man, he, he had a lot of fire, and you could beat him, pound him to death, but yeah. he never died. And yeah. I mean, he, he, he was great. Yes. I mean, he was just great. And Ole said, no, 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 you you can't make no money. And I said, no, let me, let me. anyway, Ole ended up giving me, you know, and, and Tommy and I went around and Tommy got stronger and, and he became, you know, a big star there, you know. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he had a great career. And, I mean, he he was probably one of the, you know, with uh, TBS and Turner, Nationwide TV, that was probably that he was first. I mean, he, everybody loved Tommy Rich. Oh yeah, he was he was like the Hulk Hogan in 1981. He was big, huge, 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 big, yeah. big, big star. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we go. Uh, I ended up being his partner a little bit later on too. You know, we kind of teamed up every once in a while. We'd be team and you know and everything. So uh, Tommy. Tommy's a good guy. I like him. I met him a couple a couple different times, and boy, you're right. He's just funny as hell. There's no doubt about it. And I don't think he means to be funny. He just is a funny guy. So, <laughs> all right, the last name on our list, my friend, and we're coming up to the end here, and I knew we could do this. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, number 20, you were the NWA International Tag Team Champion with this gentleman. I'm going to go ahead and let you tell me who he is. Are you asking me? Yeah, but you got to – I mean, I'm going to tell you, you – I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, do a little differently. You know who you – you held the NWA International Tag Team Championship with him, Mr. Ron Bass. Who? <laughs> I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were just being funny. No, Ron Bass. Outlaw Ron Bass. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ron Bass. <laughs> My dog's barking in the background. My wife came home. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Hi, Mrs. Slarian. What a mess. What a sweet guy. Great guy. Yeah. Good talent. You know, I mean, uh, you know, old country boy like me, yep. Texas guy. Yeah. I mean, well, he wasn't from Texas, but he, you know, I mean, he was a cowboy and uh, yeah. the outlaw Ron Bass. And uh, we, we teamed up. And we won the championship over there together one time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he was just a good guy yes. and uh, a great talent. But, uh, I mean, just a sweetheart guy, too, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. I, I really like Ron. I yeah. always like Ron. We had him on our show. I think it was I think it was last, I think it was last year or maybe it was a year before. It's hard to keep yeah, track nowadays. Yeah, I think nowadays. he was on there before. Yeah. You talked to me or yep. something. Yeah, I think it was. I think it might have been on the same day or something or at least a week. Uh, it a, might have been. Yeah, great great guy. He's, you know, he's, he's very, very soft-spoken when you're on the phone with him. He's just very, like, really laid back, real cool and stuff. And that's what I love about professional wrestling because not a lot of people would think that, you know, my buddy Boris Zukov, who I had on last week, Jim Nelson, uh, would be... Ah, is he still... Yeah, where is he at, man? He's oh, he, he's, he lives in Alabama. Uh, he he drives trucks and... Uh, yeah, that's what I heard. I mean, I've heard well, that for a while, I guess. I'm going to give you... I'm gonna, hello to him. He is, well, he's a great guy. I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to give you his phone number. I'll call you tomorrow with his phone number. Maybe you can give him a call. I'm sure he'd love to yeah, hear from yeah, you. Yeah, I'd like to touch base with him. Oh, absolutely. He, yeah. He, he's one of my he, favorite people. He, he, one time and it had me completely fooled. You know? <laughs> he can imitate a lot of people, you know. Oh, he's good. He really fooled me good, you know. And you know what? Boris is, uh, well, Boris, Jim, whatever you want to call I'll call him Boris, but Boris is so smart. I mean, he could sit there and rattle off history. Well, he's got a head the size of a watermelon. <laughs> he ought to be smart. We 
talked about that last week in the interview. He said the same thing, and he says he's got the biggest head in the business. And uh, I said, it's chock full of brains, baby. You ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> I'll definitely call you. I'll call you tomorrow, and I'll give you his number because I got it at home somewhere. But I will definitely uh, shoot you his phone. I, I know he'd love to hear from you, and uh, just he, you know, yeah. he's he's you and him are two of my favorite people in the wrestling business. I'm not kidding you. And um, talking to you guys is is great because, like you told me on the phone the other day when we were just chatting on the phone, you said you know you, you you're enjoying as you're getting older talking more about the business, and you really like to sit down and talk. And you said you were looking forward to doing this twenty question thing with the twenty names and. I was looking as forward as hearing your answers as you were telling them, and I think this has been a really fun 30 minutes or so, and I'm really glad you were able to come on the air and talk to us about this, Stan. Well, you know, it's, it, it, it's a real honor to be out here, and anybody out there from the age that uh, I was wrestling and everything can remember all those great, great opponents or people that I talked about. Right. You know, I think that was the heyday of wrestling. Oh. I mean, I know it's huge business now and they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars and good for them. Good mm-hmm. for them. Sure. For them. Sure. You know, I'm happy for them. But, yeah. you know, back when we were, you had to ride up and down the road, spend hours and hours, had to sleep in the same daggum room on the floor to save money. You know, I think uh, people built a, a, a character and also friendships and you know like that you know you just when you go through times like that you always remember those are the, the great memories that I have at that time Oh yeah, yeah, and and I'm glad that you come on here and talk to us about those because I can only imagine what it was like in your day to go out there and wrestle. I mean, I gave you 20 names of the 20 greatest people in the business. I mean, you didn't work around just I mean, there's, nobody. You know, there's there's a hundred more names oh. out there that are great too. Easily, <laughs> you know, what? I I had to sit down. I had I had to I had to like take a list and really start you know ju- uh, 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 choosing who I wanted to put on this list. You know, and it was it was weird yeah. because I'm like, oh, I, well, I want to ask about. Bobby Duncan Jr. Well, no, I, I'm, well, hold on. I'll put Lex in. Well, I mean, it was a lot of names I had to cross off to put 20 in there, you know. But uh, Bobby maybe, Duncan Sr., Bobby oh, Duncan Jr., you know, I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, there's just so many great characters that I was involved with. Oh. And when I wrote the, uh, my book, you know, I mean, that's what I, I set out to try to talk about all the great, great characters. Yep. Moose Morowski, Killer yeah. Carl, you know. Uh, Killer Carl uh, Cox. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Killer Carl Cox. Yeah. But, you know, Carl Von Steiger. Oh. I mean, they were all great, great guys. Ricky Romero. You know. Oh. I mean, just some awesome, awesome talent. Jose oh. Lothario. Okay. I, I can get going. You know. Okay. Anyway. I'll t- I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm gonna do. You know, somewhere down the road before the end of the year, I'm gonna have you back on again. We're gonna do another twenty. How does that sound? <laughs> well. You get me started, I can't stop. <laughs> it's like Pringles. Once you have one Pringle out of that can, you got to finish the whole thing. I understand, buddy. I understand. But yeah. listen, we'll do it again. I, I really, I really enjoy this. I like doing the twenty question thing. I think it's a well, lot I hope of fun. The people enjoy it. Oh I hope God, the yes. People enjoy, you know, the God, stories yes. of the uh, of yeah. the other guys. You Damn know? right. It's not about Stan Hansen. It's no. about all the great guys. You yeah, and you and you yeah. told me you wanted to do this because you wanted to talk about the guys you worked with. And everything. I think that's very commendable, and we love you for that. Listen, Stan, we're gonna let you go tonight you enjoy your wife there and run those dogs a little bit and have some dinner and just uh take it you know have a good night tonight take it easy and we'll definitely be in touch and i will call you tomorrow with that number on board so you guys can get back in touch yeah, okay yeah. I, I appreciate that oh uh, not a problem buddy fine, Brian. okay you take you take good care stan all right see you buddy all right there you go stan hansen everybody right there one of the greatest people to ever step foot inside a ring. One of the toughest SOBs to ever get inside that ring, too. And we'll, we'll talk to him again somewhere down the road, and I'll give him 20 more names. Why don't we just do this, Brian? Let's uh, let's go ahead and give time for yes. one caller. Okay. One caller can call in right now. We'll take one caller because we are over um, over our time, but we'll go ahead and take one caller. 480-745-1033. Call in now. Did you say 480-745-1033? I did. Is that what you said? Look at that. Oh, there we go. There we go. One call. Let's put them on the air. Are we ready to go? Hey, all right. Welcome to Off the Top Rope Radio. Brian Shank and Joe C. with you here. Who's this? Uh, this is Big Dave. Oh. Hey, Big Dave. What's going on, man? Uh, good, great interview, Shank. Oh, thanks, pal. I appreciate that. You listen to the show quite a yeah, bit? Welcome back, Joe. Hey. hey, good to see you. Good, <laughs> I was going to say good to see you, but good to hear you. This, this is Big Dave from... Uh, Big Dave was just in a in a popular movie out here. Um, yeah, 
uh, it's so popular I can't remember the name. Pork, dead and, dead pork, and Five Heartbeats, is that the name of it? Dead and Five Heartbeats, yes, sir. Oh, nice, it wasn't nice. Porky 7? I thought it was Porky 7. <laughs> no, that wasn't the one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that was the other big day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that might have been. No. Yeah. Well, did, you, did you enjoy the interview there? Yes, sir. Good. And, uh, I don't know. I missed like the beginning of that. We might mention that when he was in No Holds Barred with Hulk Hogan too. Yeah, I had notes to bring that up because I remember the scene he came in with the bathroom and goes, "Look at this little tiny right. wee wee," you know. And I, I wanted to bring that up, and I, you know, we ran out of time. And we're running out of time right now, unfortunately. But I'm glad you gave us a call. I hope you can listen to us each and every week, right you here. A, you got a question? You got a question or something, Dave? Yeah, just a quick question um, on your opinion. Um, last week they had Betty White on, and she came out with Big Show. Just wondering what do you think they're going to do with Big Show, either right now or before WrestleMania? You know, the thing is with Big Show is that, you know, he was involved with that Brock Lesnar situation for a while there, and they were, you know, building up towards that. But now it, it kind of looks more like they're going to eventually build with Brock Lesnar and Undertaker for WrestleMania because they even right. taped something like a year and a half ago at one of his UFC uh, events and whatever. In uh, terms of what Big Show's going to do, you know, I know that he's been talking. I've been hearing a lot of rumblings about him kind of, just, you know, taking a little bit more easy here and buying his time and being there, you know, sporadically like The Undertaker. Um, I don't know if they're going to have any really big plans for him at WrestleMania. Um, I, I like that he's a face because he's a lovable guy. He's funnier in hell. I met him, I think, two times. Very, very funny guy. I mean, just and larger than life, you see this guy in the room, you, your eyes are as big as hubcaps because the guy is just bigger than life. It's unbelievable. But in terms of anything really high-profile at WrestleMania, I, I don't see it. Um, but I do hope he stays on and, and you know keeps active Definitely. with the WWE because he is a mainstay. I mean, you think about Big Show, the Giant, back in you know WCW in 96, 97. Right. He was huge, and he's still big today. You know, So God bless him. Absolutely. Yep. All right, man. All right. Well, uh, thanks for calling in, Big Dave. Uh, enjoy. Uh, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dave. Enjoy the show regularly. And, yeah, good, thank you, man. Good hearing from you, buddy. Take good care. All. all right. All right. Here we go. All right, Big Dave. Appreciate those phone calls there. We thank everybody who was chatting with us here, uh, Diggity Dak and everybody else out there. Uh, it's always good to hear from our fans. And if you want to do so, you can always email me at Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at KQCKRadio.com. As a matter of fact, if you email me, I'm going to be giving away a Stan the Lariat Hanson autographed picture. Okay. You so, talking about the one in your bedroom, the life-sized one? No, no, that's, that's staying in the bedroom. But this is one that I have. If you want to win this, I will send it to you. Stan the Larry Hanson. Now, if you also are an Adam Pierce fan, Adam also sent me a couple pictures here I just got the other day. I got an extra one here that I'm going to go ahead and give away on the radio show. So if you're a Scrap Iron Adam Pierce fan, you can also send me an email at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at kqckradio.com. And I will pick someone at random for that Adam Pierce autographed picture directly from Adam himself in good old California. So, everybody, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week right here on Off the Top Rope Radio. Thank you. When you visit Hill Family Dentistry in Santan Valley, dentist Dr. Tim Hill provides each patient with personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you and your family with services that will make you smile with a full range of general, 